Hello, everyone. Welcome. Okay, cool. So, and also, like, the, te um, the, the text is now white again. I don't know, I just, I'm, I really like, this is gonna be three hours real close calls. Yes, no, it's gonna be one hour, and I'm thinking of doing, so I'm open for suggestions, but my plan was to do, start with um, a little review of Te Kureru and Te Ageru, and then go into maybe some uh, verbs, like verb conjugations in general. Because I think te kureru and te aguru is always like a big, a big topic. Konbanwa, minasan, welcome. So we're just gonna do a little bit of grammar. So I think we'll start with, um, I think we'll start with te kureru and te aguru. Because that's like always a, a thing. Hey, why does it show, <laughs> why does it show um, a slash in chat when you type it on Twitch, but it shows a yen in the overnight? That's kind of strange. Oh well. All right. So let's start with. Um, Let's start with a little bit of, like, giving. Okay, cool, it's working. Your stream language is Japanese. Is it? No, I doubt it. Giving. Um, and receiving. The age-old topic, okay? Giving and receiving. Hey-san, konbanwa. Mina-san, konbanwa. I said system. Oh, system. That's okay. I can't read. <laughs> it happens. All right. So for those of you that know, thank you, thank you. I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> for those of you that know, there's um two main verbs and then like a third one. But let's start with only te kureru and te ageru, okay? Or actually, let's start with just those verbs on their own and without them being used auxiliary, really. So we have. Our number one, which is Ageru. Ageru. Oh, and the other one is Kureru. Um, wow, I had to think really hard about how you spell Re for a second there. Kureru. Okay, so does anyone already know like what the main difference is? I'm sure some of you already know, but like maybe we can make this a little bit interactive. So. How would you describe, as concisely as possible, the main difference between Ageru and Kureru, and how one can, like, think of that, or how one can help make sense of that? Because, um, there's multiple ways of thinking of it. I think, um, there's, like, a basic one, and then there's, like, an extended mindset that you can have for Kureru and Ageru that sort of expands, um... That sort of expands the understanding to a more general situation. And I wanna... Ageru is when the giving is from your perspective going out. That's very good, yes. And then Kureru, of course, being the opposite, right? Didn't raise my hand, not it. <laughs> yeah, see, so this is very good. Um, I think this... Um, let me just change this real quick, and then we can... Okay, so I think... Um, this here, this understanding of um, Ageru being giving from your perspective, I think that's very good. That's like that base level understanding that I want, that I that I meant. So what I will try to do now in the next few minutes is to give this extended understanding that you can apply in general, okay? So for any situation. Because I think the main problem with um, saying it from your perspective is what happens if you're not even part of the sentence? What happens if you like this like what happens if the speaker isn't really part of the action right because then you're taking yourself out of the equation so what are you left with you can't look at something from your perspective when you're not there okay so let's talk about this but yeah so the easy way is um ageru is when you're giving okay you're giving and kureru is someone that's not how you spell someone. Someone, um... Giving to you. So that's the, the basic understanding. And with this you already get quite far. Um, so this is also what I said, I think, yesterday on the stream, right? This is how I explained it. This is the basic understanding. And now we can sort of expand on that. Um, to make, to hopefully create a general understanding. And for this, we're gonna have to talk about a very popular topic, which is the so-called um, uchi and soto. So, 
the concepts of uchi and soto. These are two words that we'll put in the dictionary real quick so you can see them. So uchi generally means inside. Um, so you have uchi. Inside, within. So among, between. So here, also I and me, but that's not as important. This is more like kansai men, but whatever. So we'll look at mostly this inside and within definition. So, and uh, so this is one of them, uchi. So I'll write this down here. So we have, um, so it doesn't matter that Uchi is at the same height as Ageru, by the way. I'm just gonna write them down. The other one is, <laughs> hey Koko, um, the other one is Soto, okay? So I'll write it down first while I'm already writing. Soto, okay? Soto is outside. The opposite, basically. Soto. So now we know the two words, Uchi and Soto. So how does that help us? Well, um, the whole point of generalizing the understanding of Ageru and Kureru is that you have to understand the concepts of Uchi and Soto um, and how they're used in this context. The way that they're used is imagine um, let me make some more space here. So we have Uchi versus Soto. So the whole idea is imagine you're here, okay? Imagine this is you. Tiny little you. Not to say that you're tiny, you might be taller than me, oh, but still. Let's say this is you. The, um, around you exist sort of circles of familiarity, okay? So, everything... Um, like, you in the center is very much like the most uchi you can get, okay? Which is yourself. This is like the most uchi it gets. It doesn't get much more uchi than this, okay? <laughs> and then, as you move out, right? You have maybe... So this is uchi, this is just you. No one else is in here. This is literally just you. This is the closest, the, the highest level of familiarity you can get. Then there's a level beyond that, which we would probably say is something like your family, your house. I'll draw like the kanji for house, okay? So this would be ie, or I'll, I'll use the kanji for house, but think of it as your family, people that live with you maybe. Um, so I drew ie, just so you can see it in, in proper writing as well. So think of this as like your family, okay? And then think of this next circle maybe as like I don't know, maybe your neighborhood or something or your company, right? You get the you get the idea. So let's say this is maybe um you know uh, wait, that's not how you do that. <laughs> I had to think of uh wait, Kaisha Losha. Right, it's it's um Shibesuha. See, I'm not very good at drawing kanji because I keep forgetting. So let's say this is maybe like your neighborhood or your company, so this is company, right? Um, it's maybe your company, something like that. And then as we move out, we get more and more removed. So, outside here, let's call this Soto, okay? So this is Soto. Of course, there's... you can infinite... you can have, like, infinite levels here if you wanted to. You could differentiate between each person or whatever. But for, um, sake of simplicity, let's look at it like this. Now, what we can do is, we can now generalize Ageru and Kureru and I'll do that with like a nice blue color. We can now generalize Ageru. Um, so let's mark this with this color here. Ageru is everything that goes in, in the direction away from you and toward the outside, okay? This way is Ageru. And obviously Kureru just becomes the opposite of that. So let's do like a nice orange color. So Kureru is everything that goes towards you. So let's start here goes in. Okay, let's make an example, okay? Say, the obvious example that we had at the start is, of course, you yourself giving or receiving. This is also what, um, this is also what Kemi said, right? So, the obvious choice then, when, um, you're giving to someone, because you're alone here, it sounds really sad, but it's true, you're alone on, in the uchi side here, uchigawa, <laughs> basically. This is just you, right? No one else is in here. So if you're giving to someone else, it has to be Ageru. It has to be, because no one else is in here, right? No one else is in here, so... Obviously, if you're giving to them... Why can't I delete this? Okay, if you're giving to them, they must be somewhere in these places, right? And whenever we move outside, we use Ageru. So if I'm giving to my family, I use Ageru. If I'm giving to someone at my company, I use Ageru. If I'm giving to my neighbor, I use Ageru. If I'm giving to a stranger, I use Ageru, right? Does that make sense? And then obviously the reverse is true for Kureru. 
if, um, you know, if my mom gives something to me, then I use kureru. If my coworker gives something to me, I use kureru. And if a stranger gives something to me, I use kureru. Okay? This is specifically for giving. Um, and now we can expand this to more general situations. What do we say if my sister gave something to our neighbor? Well, my sister lives in my house. So it's like a tier system. Yeah, it's like a tier system, exactly. So, well, my sister, which doesn't exist, I'm an only child, but for the sake of argument, my sister gives something to our neighbor, okay? Well, my sister lives in my house. She's part of my family, so she's certainly more familiar than our neighbor. So this would be something like this. Um, so we have ageru. So if I'm talking, so to a degree, it's still from my perspective because you're always, um, you're always at the center of those levels of familiarity. What if you don't like your sister? Well, um, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter much actually. This is just sort of set in stone. <laughs> there are probably situations when it, situations when it would be ambiguous, like if it's two complete strangers. But then um, we can talk about this later, maybe. So if my sister is giving to our neighbor, then I use ageru because my sister is closer. So this is moving outside towards soto from uchi. And if like, for example, like we get, I don't know, we get fan mail from a random stranger <laughs> or like, no, if, um, so imagine this being my company, right? This shop and imagine an outside company sending us a parcel, then it would be kureru, because some form from Soto is sending towards Uchi. Okay, now using this, you can pretty much figure out whether to use ageru or kureru in almost every situation. Um, I would say like every situation, it usually, like I've never had, thinking of it, um, these circles of familiarity, I've never really had a situation where it didn't work. Uh, maybe if you can think of one, um, then we can talk about it and we'll see if there is um, there is gray areas. There might be. I just haven't really intend, like found one. So if your friend got something from someone you don't know, it would be kureru. Uh, yes, exactly. Because your friend is more familiar to you, so you sort of um, talk from... So it, it's like it's it came towards you, um, if you imagine it like that. And if it comes towards you in this sort of understanding, then we use kureru. And the other way around, if your friend gave something to maybe a friend of his that you don't know, you would use ageru. Because it's going outside. Uh, by the way, so... As you might know, ageru and kureru use specific kanji. Okay, ageru. It's this kanji for to give. Um, this one, the one that's marked in yellow here. Whoops. So the one that's marked in yellow, right? This is ageru specifically in this meaning of to give. And kureru also has quite, of a, quite an interesting kanji. Kureru. This is this one. Kureru. To give, okay? Um, to do for one, to be given. Yeah. Um, this to do for one is most likely meant to be in the perspective of the speaker. The speaker being the one. So, yeah. <laughs> You're the one, Neo. So this is kureru. Um, but a way you can imagine this also is, as you may know, ageru and kureru can also be spelled with different kanji, mainly, uh, namely, ageru can be spelled with a kanji for up. Now, and, like, obviously, kureru can be spelled with, well, now, kureru can't be spelled with a kanji for, for down, but, like, like, kudasaru or, 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 um, um, what's the other one? Ku... There's, there's another one, I forgot. Uh, ku... <laughs> kudas or whatever. Kudasu, there is kudasu or kudasaru or whatever. So those are the ones for down, kudasai. Yeah, there's, there's those, right? Um, so maybe if you think of it as the up and down analogy, you can kind of remember which is which. What I mean with that is, if you use this understanding of uh, ageru and kururu, you can think of anything going outside as going up. Because you know in Japanese, um, it's all about relative levels of politeness, right? So anyone who's like on a higher social standing than you, let's say this is the emperor, doesn't he wear like a hat like this? Uh, he, now he looks Russian, whatever. So let's say this is the emperor. <laughs> it doesn't have to be the emperor, okay? It can be anyone really, it doesn't matter. But this notion of you being here, 
and there's this sort of, you know, there's this sort of uh, difference here in in standing. Even even if you have like the same job and everything, um, on some level there is still this notion where you should try and be respectful by lowering yourself. Of course, there are situations where this applies differently. The Emperor of Russia, yeah. For example, when you're in like the senpai position, there's some things you may say that your kohai may not say to you. But for the notion of ageru and kureru, even if you are the senior at the company, you would still use ageru to anyone else because of this. Because even if they're your sem, even if they're um, your your you know um, your underlings or whatever, they're still not in your uchi. That's still not how it works, right? This is not as much hierarchical. This is really just familiarity. Um, and you, you're always at the center of your familiarity, okay? So even if um, you're the, even if you're the senpai at the company, you would still use, um, you would still use ageru to go up, because you're lowering yourself. You're trying to lower yourself, and he would, and you would use kureru if he gives something to you. So you can maybe try and remember it like this, with up and down, and then you should have an easier time of remembering it. Okay. So. I think that's actually, I think that's actually all you need to know about Kureru and Aguru. It's not that, well, there is a little bit more and we'll get into that. Um, it's not all that crazy, actually. Um, if you think of it like this, I think you can wrap your head around it fairly easily. Like really let that concept of Uchi versus Soto sink in and you're good. I think you're set. The other thing that I should talk about is probably Let's pick this nice green color and draw over what I just draw through here. Oof, this is gonna take a long time, so let's not do this. Um, can I, like, fill in a bunch of stuff at once? Maybe not. Oh boy. So, let's get rid of this, and now let's talk about using kureru and ageru as adverbs. Uh, sorry, not as adverbs, as auxiliary verbs. How much can we translate do and get? Um, I'm not sure what you mean, but I may be about to explain it. <laughs> I'm not sure. We'll see. Do and get. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what you mean. <laughs> you mean morau? You should get just let go of that idea. Oh, okay. Maybe you mean morau. We should maybe get into morau, but I want to finish this first because... So, morau is kind of the party pooper because morau ruins everything. No, it doesn't. But, um, it would be nice if there was only kureru and ageru because it works out so nicely and it helps. Like, like there's a pretty easy way to figure out which one to use in almost every situation. Yeah, doing giving. So, that's okay. That's what I'm about to talk about, actually. So, that's good. Doing something for someone, right? Yeah, that's what I'm exactly. That's what I want to get into right now. So, there is a way to use. Um, te ageru and te kureru. Which means that you have any verb in its te form, and we might actually get into te form later on when I do like maybe verb reviews. So, te um, ageru, obviously. Te ageru. Pop and te kureru. Okay. For now, I'll just assume that you know exactly what the te form is and how it works. Or rather, maybe I'll just give a quick review or a quick overview for those that really don't um, don't know what the te form is. Te form, the easiest way of thinking it, think of this as a linking form. It combines two verbs, okay? One verb will be in its te form and then you can add another verb. That verb will then be used as a completely separate verb sometimes. But, well, not really, it's always, they're always sort of linked. Once you use te form, there is some sort of link there between the two verbs. Um, but generally, you have te form and you can add verbs there. And sometimes they're linked more closely and sometimes they're linked a little bit loosely. Um, it's not, it's not 100% set in stone. With te kureru and te ageru, they're linked fairly closely. Um, even so close that I would say this is basically using them as aux auxiliary verbs, okay? Which means that they are like helping verbs that change the meaning of the whole compound. Okay. Now, keep in mind what we just learned about te kureru, or keep in, learn what, <laughs> keep in mind what we just learned about ageru and kureru. And now let's expand this to actions. Hey, VS Lightning, thank you for follow. Let's expand this concept to actions. 
What would it mean to receive or give an action? Well, it's fairly simple. Um, let's say we have something like taskete, okay? Taskete obviously is here the te form of taskeru, which means to save or to help. Tasukeru. Tasukeru is a nice example because it's already it has this sort of helpfulness by uh, put into it, right? This this help, this saving someone, aiding someone. So let's take taskete, which is the te form of taskeru. Tasukete. And now let's add ageru. Plus, I'll make a plus here, okay, so that we can see that we're adding two verbs together. Ageru. You see that I don't run out of space, but we're fine. Let's think about this. What would it mean, taskete ageru? Right? Like, what, what are we supposed to understand with this? Well, we have the action of taskeru, which is to save or to help someone. And we combine it with ageru, which means to give an action to someone that is... Soto compared to relative to your uchi, you know, what we just learned. Someone that is on the outside, someone that is on a, a further level of familiarity. Well, that means that the usage with familiarity applies just the same. So you would use it in the same situations with the same people. However, now it is linked to this meaning of saving. So now if I'm offering someone help, I can say, Taskete ageru yo, which means, hey, I'll help you. And this taskete ageru, the ageru, so you could theoretically just say taskeru yo, which is I'll help you. Um, the usage of te ageru and te kureru can often help convey an extra sense of um, politeness, an extra sense of gratefulness, mostly with kureru. Um, so kureru, right? Think of it the other way around now, with taskete kureru. Tasukete kureru. Well, if it's kureru, then we're receiving it, or it's coming towards us in levels of familiarity. Then we use taskete kureru specifically to express a sense of gratitude, saying like, thank you for helping me, like, thank you for giving me this help, right? Thank, thank you that I can take this help from you, I'm, I'm glad about it. Um, so that's why kureru often is used, and I feel like um, the most obvious difference of using kureru or akeru in this way is or mostly, so the most obvious difference of using kureru and just taskete arigato is that, like, thanks for helping, is that the taskete arigato really doesn't carry the same sense of gratefulness. Taskete kurete arigato, like um, Kami just said, taskete kurete arigato really means like, hey, thank you, right? Thank you for doing this for my sake. Um, in general, ageru and kureru combined with verbs always means that there's some sort of benefactor, um, there's, there's someone benefiting from the action, whether that is you or someone else. So if it's someone else, then you can use ageru, you say taskete ageru, like I want to help you, um, like I, I want to benefit you. Taskete kureru, you're benefiting me, you're helping me, and I'm grateful. That's te kureru, te ageru. And you can um, extend that to basically any verb. Whether it makes sense or not, well, is sometimes questionable, right? Like. You can say tabete ageru, which is I'll eat it for you, which makes sense in some situations. Um, but in others, it might sound a bit weird. <laughs> for example, if someone is giving you food and you're like, ah, tabete ageru yo, which is like if you already gave him the food and you're saying, oh yeah, I'll eat this for you, don't worry about it. It's like you're eating it out of pity or something. So you have to be, there are, there are nuances to it where you maybe don't want to use it. But on the other hand, if someone says, oh man, I can't eat anymore, I'm so full, you can say, Tabete ageru yo, like, I'll eat it for you. Just give it to me, right? I'll do it. Okay? So, yeah, there's there's situations, as always, there's situations where you should use it, and there's situations where you probably shouldn't. As with almost <laughs> anything, in any language. Okay. I think that wraps up kureru and ageru pretty nicely. Do you have any questions about this? Because now is the time to ask. Um, any usages that you're confused about. And we'll we'll talk about morao next a little bit. Uh, but to be honest, morao is a bit tricky. Okay. If that was clear, then I'm glad. I was trying to make this as clear as possible. Uh, let's see if I can not... Can I not... Um... So now let's talk about the receiving part of this giving and receiving duality. Can I make this, like... 
screen. Does this work? I don't know how things work. <laughs> how do I... Can I like not make um... Oh, I can make a shape. Maybe that will work. Oh gosh, it's not filling it up. Oh, but I can fill it now with the fill tool, right? Right? Fill. Solid. That's the wrong color. Uh, um, uh, color tube, color picker, this color. That did not work. Oh boy. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I got it. Okay, I'm glad. Guys, I'm, re I'm, I'm really good at using paint. I'm not sure if you noticed. Um, you know what? You know what I'll do? Okay, I'll be a real, a real radical. And I'll just get the picture again and post it again. Copy. Paste. Ha! There's nothing you can do to stop me. Paint. That's pretty good. <laughs> New blackboard. Alright, here we go. Perfect. I am a pro user. Of paint, that is. So, let's talk about... Um, so now let's talk about specifically the receiving part. I know, right? That was pretty amazing, if I do say so myself. Um, let's talk about... Oh, I need to make this color yellow. Okay, good. Let's talk about the receiving part real quick. Receive. Receiving, okay. Before we had giving and receiving, now we just have receiving. There is a verb called... Let's, let's leave some more space. More out. Morao. Morao means to receive. And it sort of messes with things a little bit. Morao. Um, it means to, to receive or to get. And um, in the same way that you can add ageru and kureru to verbs with te form, you can also do that with morao. You can say te morao. Um, and the thing is, this sort of falls outside of this uchi versus soto convert. Uh, soto. Soto. Uchi versus Soto conversation because there's only one. Um, there's only one word for receiving uh, as such. Like, I'm sure, of, course, of course, you can phrase it other ways, but generally, this is the most basic and like only standard word that just means to receive in general. I'm making air quotes, but you can't see me, but it's, it's fine, don't worry about it. Um, and the reason it messes with it is because there's only one. There's not two versions. There is not a Uchi and Soto version for Morao. So it's a bit tricky, like, this one is more... It's more one of those where you just sort of know when to use it, or you don't. Um, I wouldn't really say that I always know when it's appropriate to use morao versus kureru and ageru. Because if you think about it, kureru and ageru should sort of cover most of your bases. Most of your bases, because it means to give, that's true, it only means to give. But if you want to emphasize the receiving, sub, um, the receiving part, you could, for example, switch the subject. So, okay, let me make an example, okay? Say we have person A. Say we have per person A and person B, okay? And uh, let's say person A happens to be more familiar to us. So this one is more familiar. I'll, um, I'll add like, I'll add like a little heart because, I don't know, maybe they're our family, right? We love them. So they're more familiar with us. Um, now, of course, if, a transfer happens in this direction, we can say that, like, we could theoretically say, right, we could say, um, well, yeah, in this case, so yeah, um, in this case, we would say, kureru, right, so, B-san, B-san ga A-san ni presento kureta, so, Mr. B gave Mr. A a present, um, well, actually, I was saying that, like, could it, okay, we have most of your bases covered? That's not really that true. But, like, in this case, you can clearly talk about this action. Now, if you want to say that A received something, you would say, A-san wa B-san ni presento moratta. Or A-san, some, sometimes you say B-san kara. You can say kara, okay? So, let's, let's phrase these two, okay? So, B-san, um... B-san ga... Let's make a comma to make it very clear. B-san ga... Well, actually, I don't, I don't like the comma, so let's, let's get rid of the comma. I've changed my mind. B-san ga A-san ni... Presento. Uh, so, um... So... Pu... Pu... De... 
Presento. I'll only write this like once and then just copy it. Presento. Oops, that's not how you do to. Oh, hey, what's this? Man, how did I just do that? What did I just do? This is amazing. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> it deleted a bunch of stuff. I'm learning so much about pain today, you guys. Presento. Oh. Kureta. And I'm using past tense just because. You could also use future tense if you wanted to, or, or like non past rather. Kureta. So, Mr. B gave Mr. A a present, and you can also see some nice things here, such as the fact that the recipient of the action is marked with me, usually. And the giver is obviously just our subject. So Bison is just, well, you can see with the got. Bison is just our subject because he's the one doing Kuril, right? So, um, wait, now I need to Bison ga. Yeah, yeah, so he's the one doing the giving, right? So he's the one doing the Kuril. So he's our subject. And A is our indirect object, so to speak. Okay, so this is for Kuril. Now you can phrase this another way. So let's just add it, like, below. Let's copy this presento o part, because I'm lazy. Let's put this here. So, think of it as an option, right? So we can either do number one, or number two, presento o moratta. And of course, we'd have to change something here. Um, this would then be different. Let me maybe... Actually, I probably have to, like, write the whole thing, because it would be too confusing. So let's write the whole thing. It's probably better if I do that, because now we have to switch. Obviously, we have to switch subjects, right? Because morao, someone else is doing the morao. The same person can't give and receive in just one transaction. So, of course, now, if we want to say A got a present from B, then we have to start with A. Well, we don't have to start with A, but we need to have at least A be the subject. A be the subject, okay. A sang ga. This is now our new subject. B sang ni. Or Bisan Kara. Let's go with Kara because it's a little bit less ambiguous. Kara. Um, and then. Oh, I forgot the sun, but you get the gist of it. Use Morao if the receiver is the subject. Yeah, exactly. Because um, the subject is obviously always the person doing the action, right? So if someone's receiving, then they have to be the subject. Because they're doing the receiving. There are the re they're, they are The action of receiving is on their part. So they have to be the subject. A-san, B-san, Kara, right? Pu blah blah blah, you get the gist. Pre presento o uh, moratta. It's not very nice o, so there. Moratta. Cool. So, this is that, right? A-san ga, B-san, Kara, presento o moratta. A got a present from B. Now, so, you're asking what's the difference? Well, what is the difference, right? What is the difference in English when I say B got- B gave A a present and A got a present from B? It's sort of a shift in focus, really, and it really depends on the situation. Um, in my opinion, um, the main difference is really just this shift in focus. So, if you want to focus on the receiving, you use morao. If you want to focus on the giving, you use kureru. Or, or ageru. We can, of course, sentence one, let's give those a number, and let's make a full stop so we can see that one sentence ends and the new one begins. Let's give this the number one, and let's give this the number two. You can, of course, see that sentence one um, can also be phrased using um, ageru. All we have to do is, say, put the heart on B, right? If B-san is the one that's uh, familiar with us, and A-san is the one that isn't familiar with us, we would use ageru. But that's, that's besides the point. What I mean is, in sentence 1, we really focus a lot on the giving. And in sentence 2, we focus a lot on the receiving. So it sort of depends on what you want to put the focus on. And there's no one way of, like, deciding that. Um, yeah. The kara makes it easier. It's more confusing when there's ni instead. Yeah, of course. Yeah, that's true. So I, I specifically chose kara here because it's, it's clearer with kara. Definitely clearer. So... This thing is, um, you sort of have to decide for yourself. You have to be like, well, what is really, like, the point of the sentence? Am I, do I want to, like, shine a light on the fact that Mr. A received something? Or do I want to shine a light on the fact that Mr. B gave something to Mr. A? And there's not really a clear-cut answer for this. It depends. It depends on the situation. It depends on 
why you're saying the sentence. It depends on what kind of feeling you want to convey to the person listening to you. Um, and like sometimes people ask me, hey, why was Morao used here? And then I can't really say. Um, because it's not that easy, honestly. Um, and it takes a lot of time to really understand all the nuances. Um, so mm, I'm, I think this explanation probably is a little bit unsatisfying to you, maybe. Um, but really, what I would tell you is don't worry about it too much. It's not such a huge issue. If we're talking about um, understanding of sentences, it usually isn't an issue at all. Because it's fairly clear what they mean and how they're used. It's not ambiguous. A-san ga, B-san kara, presento moratta. The sentence is unambiguous. We know what it means. It, there's only one thing it can mean. So we understand the sentence. Why the speaker decided to use morao specifically, even if we're a bit, you know, hand-wavy about that, it's not the end of the world. We understand the sentence. We know what's going on. So as far as understanding and um, input is concerned, this is as far as you need to go. Um, with your understanding of these words. If you're getting into production, trying to actually... Um, <laughs> yeah, so I'll probably keep mentioning this also in the streams because this is one of those big things, I think. I think um, for me personally, there's a few big topics in Japanese that you really, really have to understand clearly, like once, and then it will like open up a whole new thing, like a whole new page for you, it'll be like, wow, I understand all these sentences now. One of them is te ageru te kureru, in my opinion. Another one is the ever-present rel relative clauses. Once you get a hang of those, um, you'll be like, wow, I, I understand like every sentence now. And there's like a bunch of others. Um, I would say maybe verb conjugations as a general thing, like te form and all that is also very important. Mm. So what was I saying? Right. So once it gets to once you get to the point where you wanna, um, hey, uh, you wanna like create sentences. Hey, Ito, welcome. You wanna create sentences. Now this is where it gets tricky, right? Now you have to be the one making the choice. Now you have to be the one saying like, well, I wanna use morao, and why do I wanna use it? Well, I don't know. Um, now don't get me wrong. Native speakers also may not really know why they use one over the other, but that's not how native speakers treat language. Native speakers just know. Um, because of course in English as well, or whatever your native language is, you just know what feels right. Because we don't treat language like some computer program. We just know. It's ingrained in us. We have, like, we've heard it so many times, we've seen it so many times, and it's been like said to us and we've said it to others, that we just know intuitively which is, which is right and which is not, right? And um, it's the same with adjective order in English. Okay, um, let me read some chat. When you reply to why are you happy, you're more likely to say I got a present than X gave me a present. Yeah, that's a, that's true in some situations, but now you can also um, turn this around and say like, well, if you really, really like X, then the fact that he gave something to you might be the most exciting part to you. Not really that the present is exciting. Hey, Huckleberry Finn, thank you for the, for the raid. Welcome. And um, Chadrock, thanks for the follow. Welcome, people. We're learning grammar. <laughs> I'm sad to say that the stream isn't going to go on that much longer, though, so... Stay here while you can. How am I supposed to know if I have to read what as what and all as all? Well, okay, let me clear my, my little uh, whiteboard here. My little green board. So let's just copy this and let's get another image on top of it. Okay. Okay, let's start over. Um, to answer, oh, so could the explanation is going to help you? I feel like I've seen it a lot lately and sort of understand that most of those over it. Yes, so that's why I think it's one of those that you really have to dive into one time, real quick. Okay, so um, let's look at this question. How am I supposed to know when what is what and when it's hot? Well, there is a bunch of ways that you can know this, um, but let's start with o actually. The way to know when o is o is it's always o. Uh, so this is. Always. Okay, almost always, okay? 99%. Let's say 99%. There's some very, very small exceptions, but... Um, always... Actually, yeah, I would even say there's... There's practically no exceptions. This is always pronounced O, okay? 
I'll make like, you know, quotation marks because it's the pronunciation. It's not, of course, the same character, and they shouldn't be. That was a really ugly old. That's much better. They're not the same character, and they shouldn't be exchanged for each other. Um, hey, thanks for the follow, cops. Just went over this Japanese mastering and it was a bit confusing to understand more now. Hey, I'm glad. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. So this is always all, okay? Even if you treat this as always all, you're probably never going to be wrong in your life, okay? Um, so this is always all. Wa is a bit more tricky, but really not that bad. Let's look at wa or ha. Um, well, if you, if you know where particles usually show up... <coughs> If you know where particles usually show up, particles usually work like this, where there's a word or multiple words, and then you have a particle. And then there's a bunch more words. And then maybe there's a verb, and that's usually the end of the sentence, or it's the end of the clause, okay? And then there's a bunch more verbs, a bunch more words, and then there's another particle. And that goes on like this. <clears throat> this is, right. Oh, I had to clear my throat. This is um, Japanese sentence structure in a nutshell, okay? This is what it is, for the most part. Um, sometimes you have a bunch of nouns, one after the other. Hey, I'm an N hood. Welcome to Game Grammar, where we learn Japanese today without games. So today's just grammar. <laughs> Today, the channel is just grammar, not game grammar. So this is how Japanese sentences are usually structured. Um, if you look at this, then... And you, if you apply this knowledge, Okay, if you apply this um, to what well, you should always know which one it is for for the most part. Of course, it's not as easy as that, but you'll get used to it. So if I say, um, you know, if there's the word watashi, well, I know watashi is one word. It's one finished word, right? It means it means me. Okay, watashi. Let's get it on screen. It means I or me or or something like that, right? It's a first person pronoun, and there's this kana after it, um, like this. Well, chances are it's wa, right? Chances are it's wa, because if it's a particle, it's always wa. And chances are it's a particle, because this is a finished word, and particles tend to come right after words, okay? So, this is like 99% you can be sure this is a wa, okay? Um, times where it might be a ha even though there is watashi well if there is a word that starts with ha okay but it's only ha if it's part of an actual word okay it's <laughs> except for for words that are just ha okay there are a few words that are just ha like leaf or something but yeah or tooth tooth is just ha okay or leaf is just ha but again you'll know like if for example if you see um Let's go with the leaf example, right? If you see this... <clears throat> well, if you see the kanji, it's even more obvious, but... If you see something like this... Alright, uh, I keep wanting to make that... vertical one. Hawa itai or something, I don't know. Hawa shiroi, okay? I mean, what, what, what could we mean? I made this the wrong order. Hawa shiroi. Shiroi means white. Well, what's white? Well, it's probably gonna be a teeth. A tooth, I mean. Right? This is probably... Tooth. Um... I think like this. Anyways, doesn't matter. You see it on the screen, right? So this is probably a tooth. Um... Of course, we can't know for sure without the kanji. But, uh, let's make an educated guess, okay? They were like, well, this is probably a tooth, okay? So this is not wawa. Okay, this is a word, so it's ha. And this is a particle, because particles come after words. Or after nouns, after things, you know? Um, so this is probably what, right? Again. Um, and then, <laughs> if you, even more extreme, if you have this, okay. Well, what do we think this is? Dot dot dot. What is this? It's three three. What? How can that be? Well, turns out the word for mother is haha. Okay, so haha. Haha just means mother. So then, obviously, it should be mom, right? You can see that, in most cases, it's not really ambiguous at all. Um, and then on top of that, again, you have to fact that often kanji will be used. And as soon as kanji are used, you know it's ha, okay? Because a particle is not gonna show up inside a kanji. Particles and 
like particles are their own unit, okay? And they are not integrated into other words like this. So one kanji can never con I mean, there's kanji for certain particles, but a particle can never be integrated into the kanji for a word or something like that. Like, you, there's no way you can do that if you have the word hahaoya, okay? There's no way that we can have, like, a particle inside that word. That just doesn't happen. So, yeah, this is, this is how you know. It's really about knowing where you will find particles and where you will just not, right? This is why mom in Dragon Ball C is named Chichi and not Haha. <laughs> is his name Chichi? That means father. That's really weird. <laughs> why would you name your father, uh, your mother father? But okay. Chichi. Father. So this is, um, this is the, the, the basics of hot versus what, okay? Hey, kind blooden, 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 blooden. Welcome to Game Grammar. Okay, um, I wanted to talk about verbs, but I feel like we're running out of time, so I'll just answer some more questions and maybe talk about stuff. Why would anyone name their mother in the first place? Well, I meant more like, um, I meant more like Toriyama, you know, like why would he name the mother that? But okay, you've got a point. No one really names their own, um, no one really names their own parents, do they? Hey, here's some food for thought. Um, the brain is the only organ which named itself. Think about that one. <laughs> okay, thanks. I got it. You got it! Yes. So yeah, it's about learning when particles appear. And really, it's it's much easier than it sounds. You'll This is one of the first things you'll get a hang of. Uh, most beginners wonder about this. But then, you know, a few months after, it's not even a question, it's not even an issue. I've never seen someone who had, like, serious issues with this after a while, it just goes away. Because, um, you just start to understand, oh well this must be a particle and this must be part of a word. And then there's not, like, a huge amount of words that have, like, just a single ha or something like that. Yes, join the Discord, everyone. Thank you, um, <laughs> thank you, Nahar. It's a good idea, everyone should join the Discord so you can answer so I, we can all answer each other's questions, actually. You know what I should have done? I should have only used the colors that are here to make it, like, super realistic so that we are only using, like, the colors that are actually here. Like, the chalk. Right? I'm using yellow and I used blue. I haven't used white. And I didn't use this specific red. So, kind of broke the fourth wall a little bit there. But I think... I think I can be forgiven for that. Ah, okay. I think this is fun, right? I think this is pretty cool. I think we'll do this um, every now and again. I really don't want to do this for more than like um, a, hand, a, a hand at a time. Oh, Discord folders, folders are great. I really don't want to do this for much more than an hour at a time because it's also... Um, I get home fairly late, so this is just fine for me. Um, so I hope that you guys enjoyed this and we'll do it probably again. Maybe Wednesday or something. When I'll find like an hour of time and we'll get into it and we'll do some more grammar and then I'll probably talk about some verb conjugations and some other things. So right now we still have about 10 minutes if you want to ask some more questions or if you just want to ask about how my day was. And uh, if you don't care about my day then this is really bad luck because I'm going to talk about my day for a second. Um, it was okay. Yeah, it was fine. I'm kind of tired because... I don't know, so I don't know how you guys think about this. I'm kind of curious, actually. So for me, I don't like having lectures at 8 a.m. I think it's too early. I like having lectures at 10 a.m. I much rather stay at uni longer in the afternoon, maybe come home at 7 or 8, instead of being there at, eight, like, having to get up at 6 a.m. and being there. Even if I, even if I say I, I get home around 4 or 3 p.m., I would much rather just be there at 10 and then get home whatever late doesn't matter because um, I just can't absorb I just can't absorb like I can't do like partial differential equations at 8 a.m. it's not for me man it's not for me I can't do it <laughs> I can't do it. I can barely do partial differential equations at 2 p.m. so let alone 8 a.m. I don't know how you feel about that I'm not much of a morning person so I'd much rather do that in the afternoon I've also been structuring my day accordingly. I don't even know what a partial differential equation is. 
I, I, I barely don't, I don't really know either. Um, even though I should. I should probably get on reviewing that. I think I have something to show my personal flashback system in there too. Oh, nice. Oh, sick. Okay, you're um, like developing um, a thing. I hate early lectures, but on the other hand, when it starts at 1 p.m., I'll sleep until 12, which is bad. <laughs> yeah, that's too late. I think 10 is perfect. I take an hour to get to uni, so having a lecture at 10 means I get up around 7 or 8, and then I can still like shower and be there at a humane time. Partial differential equations in Japanese. That's a good question. Um, let's see what it is. Like, different chill equation it's ah bibun bibun hoteishiki bibun hoteishiki cool partial differential equation hen bibun shiki so that's what i'm doing apparently hen bibun shiki since work doesn't require a ton of mental effort now i wake up as early as possible ah i see i mean waking up early is great to be honest um i'm just really bad at it <laughs> I, I, I'm fine with 7 a.m. I think 7 is like my sweet spot. 7 or 8 a.m. I like waking up at 7 or 8. Waking up earlier, I tend to get tired later in the day. Or or rather, like waking up earlier, I'm like tired in the morning. I just can't quite do it because I always stay up until like midnight. And I don't know, 6 hours, as much as I tell myself it's enough, it never quite ends up being quite enough. But, uh, you know, it's fine. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, six hours, I usually do fine, and since it's only like once a week... Oh, by the way, I only have like one lecture the whole week that starts at 8. All the other ones are at 10, so I'm pretty much good. Yeah, that's a good time to start. Like, the earliest at 9. Many times in a row it's rough, yeah. I only do it once a week, so it's fine. I mean, I'm lucky, honestly. Like, I know universities out there, like in other countries, where... People get up like at 4 a.m. and they have a three-hour commute, and they have to be there at eight or something. It's crazy. Um, and then they get home <laughs> at around like nine or 10 p.m. and they barely get any sleep. I don't even know how these people exist uh, or how these like children. This is not even just university. This is sometimes just like children as well. It's really sad. Like, how are you supposed to actually learn anything if you just? How did I do that? How did I do that? <gasps> it turns yellow. Why does it turn yellow? I'm pressing delete. I don't understand. Is it because I'm using color 2? If I set this to white, will it turn white? <gasps> okay, I'm learning so much about paint, you guys. <laughs> I'm done with school, so my lectures to be never. Oh, man. That's kind of chill, too. I'm learning so much. Okay, wait. So if I make this green. No, I want color 2 to be green. Damn you! Can I make this like a color thing what if I do wait <laughs> wait a minute <laughs> we do this and then like well that's not working now I'm just like playing around with paint okay you guys um, let's call it a day okay <laughs> let's call it a day here thank you so much for watching this was really cool and a lot of people joined so I'm actually surprised I thought that maybe not a lot of people would be into this but professional painter well I'm on the way there um, I dropped out of college to sculpt people's wife who are living. I only saw the last 10 minutes. Ah. Um, I'll make sure that this ends up as a VOD on Twitch at least. It'll be a highlight, so you can watch it on Twitch. I don't think we'll put this on YouTube. It's a bit too random, I guess, for YouTube, maybe? Um, so I'll just leave it here on Twitch. I think these things really only really work as um, live content for the most part. Because also for a video, I would want it to be a little bit more structured, where we actually, like, think deeply about how we want to present the grammar and everything. I just, I just ad-libbed this, like, I just, you know, did it um, without really preparing anything. <clears throat> okay, yeah, hey, that'd be great. If you think this is something that your friends would like, do tell them. Um, it's always good to have a little promotion, a little word of mouth. Uh, until... We see uh, each other next time. I would like to introduce you to Mr. Discord and Mr. YouTube. They're good friends of mine. Um, this is our YouTube, our Discord, so if you want to check that out, please do so. And I think uh, my friend Kroya is still streaming, so we might as well host the man, because he's playing a game in Japanese. Uh, yes, he is still streaming. So, I will send you guys over to Kroya. 
and you know, hey, uh, Ram Rabbit. So thank you so much for the follow. You guys, hey, this is amazing. Listen, this is amazing. Thank you so much. We've broken over 300 followers in like a week and a half. I couldn't be happier with um, how well everything is going here on Twitch. So thank you. 